Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 10G of Useful Genetics. Here we're going to start talking about chromosome rearrangements. First about their causes in this lecture and the next, and then about their consequences. In this lecture, we'll start by talking about the role of DNA sequence repeats in promoting DNA polymerase errors. These repeats come in two kinds, tandem and dispersed, and they cause different kinds of errors with different consequences. So first, the kinds of changes we're talking about are changes that rearrange the sequences within it and between chromosomes, so that sequences come to be present in different chromosomal contexts. And in particular, kinds of changes we're talking about include deletions and duplications of sequences. So if we, for instance, consider this segment of this chromosome, we can see that in this chromosome, it's been deleted. And now the chromosome just has information A, B, C, and it jumps to J, K. On the other hand, in the lower chromosome, this same segment has been duplicated, and it's now present in two places side, side by side. That's a, We'd call that a tandem duplication. Other kinds of changes are inversions here you can see the same segment has been flipped around, so it's now pointing in the red in the other direction. Each gene on it would be red in the opposite direction than it was red before, because the sequence is now going in the other orientation. Finally, um, a major kind of chromosome rearrangements are translocations. And here I've illustrated a reciprocal translocation a tran and a translocation is a change where a piece of one chromosome has become part of another chromosome. And a reciprocal trans translocation is a situation where two chromosomes have swapped segments. So in this case, the ABCDE segment from up here has become joined to this part of the purple chromosome. And this part of the purple-pink chromosome has been placed over here. Now, these rearrangements can have dramatic consequences at many levels. Um, they can result in changes in genome size, in duplications of genes, in loss of genes. They can produce chromosomes that are unable to function as chromosomes. They can cause infertility because chromosomes may not be able to pair properly and proceed through meiosis, and they can also destroy the function of genes and create new hybrid genes when new parts of genes are brought together in new combinations. And all of these are examples of how physical events change genetic information. You'll remember way back at the beginning of the course we talked about one of the major themes of genetics is that we're both thinking about physical events, about individual molecules and things that happen to individual molecules. And we're thinking about information, in this case the genetic information that's carried by the sequences of the DNA. Now, many chromosome rearrangements are caused by the presence of repeated sequences in the genome. These cause both the DNA polymerase errors that I'm about to discuss and many of the DNA repair errors that we're going to see in the next lecture. In this picture here, you see a segment of a chromosome. This is just one gene, and all the different colors represent different kinds of sequences against a background of light green sequences with no particular function. So the green segments are the exons. So there's a tiny exon there, and a bigger exon there, and another exon there. But most of the colored sequences aren't exons. They're not part of the functional gene. Instead, most of these colored sequences, everything but the green ones, are repeated sequences in the genome, almost all of which have no functional consequence in terms of promoting gene expression or organismal fitness. They're just repeats that have accumulated in our genome from various processes that we'll discuss later. Um, these, here, these different kinds of repeats are broken down by color into different functional groups, different related 
sequenced families. The top ones are a kind of repeated family called ALU sequences. Um, signs and nine lines are short and long interspersed nuclear elements, a kind of repeated sequence. LTRs are long terminal repeats, another kind of repeated element. And SSRs are in fact the sequences that you've already met as variable number, <laughs> tandem, repeats. We talked about these in the context of DNA fingerprinting. And you can see when you look at these, the VNTR sequences, that they are. This is a cluster of sequences that consists of repeats of CA, CA, CA repeated many times, and so on for the other ones. Now these repeats fall into two categories from the perspective of their effect on chromosome rearrangements. And that is, some of the sequences, the variable number tandem repeats, are tandem. And tandem means the repeats are located right beside each other. And these repeats are usually short. The ones in the previous slide were two to four base pairs long. The other kind of repeated sequence is called a dispersed repeat. And these are sequences that are not tandem. They're scattered around the genome. Um, most of the common dispersed repeats will be on every chromosome in the introns of every gene, um, sometimes pointing one way, sometimes pointing the other way. And errors involving these can have quite different consequences for chromosome organization. So now when we come back to look at these, we'll see that only the short sequence repeats, that's what SSR stands for, the variable number tandem repeats, are tandem. All of the other kinds of repeats are dispersed. For example, here's a repeat called mirror. It's a, a short interspersed nuclear element. There's another copy and another and another and another and another and another. And they're dispersed all over this gene and all over many other genes throughout the chromosome. And the same for these other categories of repeats. For example, here's an, whoop, here's an L1 category repeat. There's another L1 category repeat. Now, these repeats cause, as I said, different kinds of changes to chromosome structure. Um, the first kind you've already encountered in the context of VNTR repeats. Um, the slipping by DNA polymerase is the way that variable number tandem repeats come to exist in variable numbers. So DNA polymerase, frequently when DNA is being replicated, um, the base pairing that holds the two strands together is not very strong at the ends of the DNA, just because it's like the ends of a zipper coming unzipped. It's more likely to happen there. And DNA polymerase can then connect back onto the template, but at a different place in the repeat. Here we have an example where the template had only three repeats in this segment, but DNA polymerase, because it slipped, has put in four repeats. The second kind of mistake that DNA polymerase makes occurs not at tandem repeats, but at dispersed repeats. And here we have a diagram showing two copies of a repeated sequence. They're at different places, perhaps on the same chromosome, perhaps at, on different chromosomes. And DNA polymerase, in the course of re replicating one, has become detached from its template. Again, DNA polymerase can then settle down on the wrong template strand. Um, now it's creating a hybrid template, a hybrid chromosome that has sequences from one chromosome and then sequences from another chromosome. 
This structure is very like the structures that are produced during homologous recombination in crossing over in meiosis. And in fact, this is a form of homologous recombination in that the two repeated sequences are homologous. They're so similar that they must have descended from a common ancestral sequence, but they're not at homologous places on chromosomes. And this recombination, this new combination, is resolved sometimes in the same way that leads to meiotic crossovers, in that so the other original connections are broken, and the repair machinery formalizes and stabilizes this connection, creating a hybrid chromosome. So we've considered kinds of chromosome rearrangements, and we've considered, considered kinds of repeated sequences, tandem repeats and dispersed repeats, and then thought about the consequences of these repeats for the kinds of errors that DNA polymerase makes. It can slip at tandem repeats, um, usually creating just small changes in chromosome length, but it can also slip at dispersed repeats and by template switching can create new chromosomes or new arrangements of sequences within chromosomes. Coming up next, we're going to look at more causes of chromosome rearrangements, ones that can't be blamed on DNA polymerase. I hope to see you there.